As you can see, I've got quite a lot of DC to DC converters, and I have to admit, this isn't the full collection. Um, but these different converters uh, basically fall into three brackets. Um, and starting here on the left, uh, this is a book converter. Um, it uses the LM2596 IC there, which is a, a five pin IC specifically for uh, book lowering the voltage. And I've got this fancy one in the clear case with a nice LCD screen on there. And this one's got the added advantage of having current limiting in it as well as uh, voltage adjustment. And next up we have the boost uh, converters and here's one I've dug out here. And again you can adjust current and voltage and this obviously boosts the voltage. Uh, anything up to about uh, 1 volt above the input um, and this one I think goes to 35 volts. That's certainly what the capacitors are rated for. And the third sort of type of DC to DC converter are book boost converters. And uh, as you can see on here, we have the LM2596 uh, like we did on the book converter. We've also got the LM2577, uh, which is a boost converter. So this board will both book and boost and I think these actually do that simultaneously. So you can go from, I think, about 1 volt up to 30, perhaps, on this particular model. And again, we've got a current adjustment, voltage adjustment there. And this also has an MPPT facility on it. Um, but don't talk to me about that because uh, maximum point uh, power tracking... Uh, I don't know how we're tracking this, but anyway. So using those two uh, chips there, we book and we boost, and we can get a wide range of voltage on the outputs of this DC to DC converter. And this is, uh, we've used this a lot in the experiments here in the shed, and again, this uses two uh, different ICs, as this one, it's an XL semi uh, XL 4016E there um, that's the book converter I think off the top of my head and through the various other components this again is just a book boost uh, converter but this little converter down here um, compared to the others uh, looks fairly um, small and basic um, but this is the one of the ones that I use the most. Now, this is sold on eBay as a SEPIC uh, DC to DC converter. A single-ended primary inductor converter. I think that's right. Sounds a bit like a tongue twister and a rhyme, but uh, I think that's right. But, interestingly enough, this also has a chip marked LM2577. And I've been through the data sheet on this uh, chip and it doesn't mention anything about being able to uh, book the voltage, only boost. So there's a little bit of magic going on here in my mind. Um, but this is a really useful converter because I can set the output of this converter here to 12 volts and if my battery is above or below 12 volts and as it goes past 12 volts that output never changes. So we use that for electronics that are a bit more sensitive that have um, lines in the manual that say do not use with anything other than the supplied adapter that sort of thing. Um, so this always stays constant which is really really useful. But this is a little bit small and it's not able to cope with very high current. So I wanted to get something the same but a bit beefier. And searching around eBay like you do, I found this. And in here is what is described again as a SEPIC converter. This one uses the XL Semi XL6009E. I think it says there. 
Uh, it's got a voltage readout here. The input's over here, either on a 2.1, 5.5mm uh, connector or via the terminal block here. And on the right hand side uh, is the output, but there's quite a lot on this board, uh, including an, OM, uh, an L7805 uh, voltage regulator, a 5 volt re voltage regulator, and an AMS 1117 3.3 uh, voltage regulator there. So it does have a 5 volt and a 3.3 volt output as well as whatever you set on here. And I think there's a good reason for that, and I'll show you that in a second. There's also two potentiometers here for coarse and fine adjustment of the voltage. Um, and the last thing, uh, well not quite the last thing, there's also a disable output button here, um, which turns off the output, I suspect. But on here, on these couple of pins over on this left-hand side, which is called PROG, plus and minus, you can apply a voltage here and change the voltage on the output. So therefore you could power a microcontroller from the 3.3 or the 5 volt output and use that to control the voltage on the output of this SEPIC converter. So I think we might have a little play with that in a bit. And in the box you get a bag with some cables in, which is unusual for DC to DC converters from eBay. But we've got uh, a reasonable piece of cable here for the output, I'm guessing, with some crocodile clips. Uh, that's pretty good, so I can fit that on the output. And we've also got some of these. Now, are these JST connectors? Uh, I'm ready to be corrected on that but again uh, leads to plug into those 5.5 uh, and 3.3 outputs so uh, first impressions I'm quite impressed with this little board and as a little novelty uh, extra with this separate converter you get this tiny little screwdriver which is interesting anyway let's turn it on uh, and that doesn't show up terribly well there, but um, I think we can see there 0 0.7 volts exactly. So I'm guessing, yeah, those potentiometers are all the way to the bottom. So I've got 13 volts coming in on the left hand side, 0 0.7 volts on the right hand side, and I guess. I could confirm that if I turned my meter on and brought that into shot. Uh, okay, so the meter says uh, 570 millivolts when this says 700 millivolts, so we're a bit out there. Um, but let's see, when we increase that, oh, it's fairly sensitive there. Um, so if I just up that a little bit, oh, even the uh, fine adjustment's pretty sensitive. But look, this is still showing 2 volts to 3 digital places, um, even though it is a bit out. Uh, but it's not too bad. Uh, what are we on? 60 millivolts out there. Uh, let's press on. And if we try it at, say, 10 volts, just adjust that there we see that we've now got two decimal places and with 10.10 volts on this uh, screen here that's bah, almost exactly, there we go, what I'm showing on my DVM so that's quite nice, we know that it's fairly accurate in that sort of range and you'll notice we've gone straight past uh, my battery voltage, the input voltage, which is 13 volts there, without any bother. Uh, let's try 15. These are a bit fiddly. 14.98 volts there. This is a little bit difficult to see, unfortunately, on the camera. 
and we're pretty close but we can take this all the way up to its maximum yeah that's not doing anything at that full adjustment of 31.46 volts and again pretty accurate there so this is quite good I can adjust the voltage um, both extremely coarse and quite coarse I would probably uh, describe it as and uh, that seems to work really well oh, but that's quite interesting isn't it there we've got 30 volts on the output at the moment if I turn that down really quickly it actually takes quite a while presumably for the energy in the uh, in the inductors there or is it the capacitor might be the capacitor on the output yeah I'm guessing it's actually on the capacitor on the output because I've got no load on here when I turn that down really quickly it takes a little while for the voltage to actually come down anyway so that seems to work really well um, I guess I could try the 5 volt output and the 3.3 volt but these are well known linear regulators I'm sure that that will be absolutely fine um, in fact shall I see if I can get it to power an Arduino and the Arduino to adjust the output voltage by the programming pins so as luck would have it I still have this on my breadboard from the other day uh, the Arduino here this potentiometer adjust the PWM output here on this digital pin 6 and it feeds this low pass filter and therefore I've got an analog voltage here on these pins which uh, can connect straight through to these pins here on the SEPIC converter but I just need to move this bridge here from manual mode using the potentiometers over here's the prog mode so if I just lift that off there change that over there and uh, then we just need to plug this in blue in this on this occasion is my negative and of course we need to power the Arduino and I'm going to do that from this 5 volt output and luckily these have a tinned ends on them so that should go straight into my breadboard there and let's turn it on excellent so the Arduino's powered up you can just see the LED there uh, we're on 700 and something 800 there obviously is an output coming through here and uh, if I just put my hand over that bit there we can see the screen on the separate converter and as I touch that potentiometer it's very sensitive but I'm now using the Arduino to control the output of this SEPIC converter I suspect, actually you shouldn't say SEPIC converter because the word converter is already in the SEPIC acronym so it's just a SEPIC so I can adjust this potentiometer and adjust the output on the SEPIC. Excellent! So this new SEPIC converter here I think is a great addition to the collection and uh, it seems to work really well. Um, I got it from eBay of course and here it is um, with the cables and that screwdriver uh, described as a PM6009M programmable book boost step down SEPIC DC to DC converter power supply £7.29 that's just over 10 US dollars and here in the description it explains that it uses that XL Semi chip um, it can do 0.8 to 30 volts SEPIC is mentioned again the 5 volt and the 3.3 volt outputs are mentioned there as well input range 6.5 to 40 volts and the maximum switching current is 5 amps 
It also goes on to explain further down that uh, those programmable pins, uh, it's anything between 0 and 3 volts. So whatever you put uh, in times 11 equals the voltage out, roughly, I think, from my calculation. And uh, so there it is. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you can, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.